Welcome everyone to this service. Today is Action for Children's Sunday and so we follow that theme together. Our service is led by one of the circuit's local preachers, Steve Oliver, and by some of our Action for Children reps. So now let's pray together. Heavenly Father, as we worship today with thanksgiving and an open heart, help us to hear you. Fill our hearts with love and compassion for those you have sent us to. Stir up our hearts and strengthen our arms to act with justice and righteousness. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let us pray. From before the world began and after the end of eternity, you are God. From the sea bursting from its womb to the wind ceasing its chase, you are God. In the vastness of the universe and in the forgotten corners of our hearts, you are God. You are our God, and we worship you. Because the world is beautiful, and beauty is a tender thing, and we are the caretakers of creation, we need you, God. Because human knowledge seems endless, and the world is our oyster, and we do not know what we do not know, we need you, God. Because we can live without you and are free to go against you and could worship our wisdom alone, we need you, God. Because you came among us and sat beside us and heard us speak and saw us ignore you and healed our pain and let us wound you and loved us to the end and triumphed over all our hatred, we need you, God. Because you, not we, are God. We need you, God.
Listen, for the God who created us says, Do not be afraid, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by name, you are mine. You are precious to me. I love you, I honour you, I am with you. Maker of all, we are your children, the creatures of your kindness, the bearers of your image. This day we will walk by your light, follow your Son and live by your Spirit. This day we will not offer you offerings that cost us nothing, for this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Gracious God, we acknowledge our failure to live up to your expectations, our failure to honour the image that you have placed in us, the image of love and beauty and truth, of hope and justice for all people, whatever their age. And so we ask for your forgiveness. In the quiet we each offer ourselves and our lives to you, asking for your grace. And so hear the words of grace, spoken to each of us and to all of us. Those words that say, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The theme of this year's Action for Children service is Choose Childhood. Action for Children believes that every child should grow up safe and happy. To make that vision a reality, they offer practical and emotional care and support. They make sure children's voices are heard and campaign to bring lasting improvements to their lives. Doing this lays the foundations for children to thrive. The work Action for Children does is only possible with our support. The Methodist Church has been by the charity's side for 150 years, but tragically there are still thousands of vulnerable children who desperately need our help. With our worship, prayers and gifts, we can make a real difference to these children. Together, we can choose safe and happy childhoods for every child. The reading today is taken from Luke chapter 4, verses 16 to 21. Then Jesus went to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and on the Sabbath he went as usual to the synagogue. He stood up to read the scriptures and was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has chosen me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set free the oppressed and announce that the time has come when the Lord will save his people. Jesus rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. All the people in the synagogue had their eyes fixed on him as he said to them, this passage of scripture has come true today as you heard it being read. Amen. We heard in our reading from Luke just now 
that Jesus picked up the scroll of Isaiah in the synagogue and began to read. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, recovery of sights for the blind, to set the oppressed free and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. I'm really pleased today to be with you on this special Action for Children Sunday to think about the work of this amazing charity, the Methodist Church's Children's Charity. As district advocates over the last year and a half, I've been responsible for making contact with the various churches in the district, all 110 or so of them, to raise awareness of the wonderful work of Action for Children and the challenges that children and families face in the world today. In a moment we're going to see some statistics about what childhood is really like. Some of them come from a report, Choose Childhood report, that, that Action for Children commissioned last year as part of their 150th anniversary. And if you don't think that children are oppressed, then just read about some of these children who are not in the situation that they find themselves by any choice of their own, but that they are victims of poverty, of neglect, of domestic abuse, and all sorts of other difficult situations that threaten to take their childhood away forever, never to be gained back. So here are some statistics and after that we'll also see a video of a story of a, a young man that was helped by Action for Children and how they came to his rescue. A, a story that tugs at the heartstrings and cuts through all the statistics to show that these are real people that we're talking about. I wasn't allowed to shower, and I went days without food. My childhood didn't exist. I was 13 when my mum and dad started taking drugs. The drugs made them paranoid. That's when they'd get violent. They'd punch me or slap me. Sometimes they'd just spit on me or push me down the stairs. I would have to sneak food into my room if I wanted to eat. I could go days without getting anything. I had to go into school when I was 13 and ask if I was allowed to have a shower. But when mum and dad found out, they battered me. I didn't see the point anymore. They started locking me in the house. I was in a really bad state. I had nothing and my clothes were covered in holes. I knew I had to escape. I ran to Action for Children and they reminded me, I am enough. I want to make friends and live my life now. Without Action for Children, I don't think I'd be alive. Those statistics, that heart-wrenching story about Lyle, demonstrates the pain and hopelessness that children and young people can experience today in this very complex challenging world that we live in. Even in this country in the UK where there is reasonable comparative uh, rich riches and wealth. 
and many of those statistics that you saw were actually from before the coronavirus pandemic and if you show them now they'd probably be even worse. Certainly in a report I read recently the number of calls to a, a children's charity regarding um, calls about domestic abuse increased by as much as a third um, during lockdown and things aren't getting any better despite the efforts of all sorts of charities including Action for Children. Overall you'll see that the number of teenagers who are experiencing anxiety or depression has increased by some 75, sorry 70 percent over the last 25 years um, and despite all the attention um, funding, local government funding has been even harder to come by and something like 2.2 billion pounds less is spent on children's services today compared to a decade ago. God's message to the people in the synagogue that day as he read from the scroll of Isaiah was clear. God's kingdom is for everyone, not just the righteous or considered, those people considered to be righteous or the untroubled, but for the prisoner, for the blind, for the sick, for the unclean or those that are considered to be unclean at the time. For those that were outcasts from society. Certainly that was the message that Reverend Thomas Bowman Stevenson took and put into action the start of what was to become the National Children's Home which then went on to become Action for Children. He'd walked past poor children begging in the streets at Waterloo Station so many times that finally he, he decided he couldn't walk by without doing, doing anything anymore and he put in, in place a uh, start of a plan that led to children's homes being built where they could be brought up away from the workhouses and all the horrors that they included for children as young as five for a safe and loving environment to be made available to those children that they could grow and thrive and develop safely. And Action for Children continue to directly help young people and families. In fact, in uh, 2017, they helped some 300,000 children and family members. And a lot of that was direct help in terms of providing fostering services or care homes, um, even though the big children's homes are no longer a feature of Action for Children's work, there are still small family units that are set up where a number of children from different families who have no longer um, been able to be part of that family are brought together to start again, to live again, a life where it is safe to be a child. They provide all sorts of advice to parents, they provide programs that help young people combat depression and anxiety. The Blues program has reached many many children and young people and all this through great compassion, great professionalism. I've personally witnessed the work that Action for Children to do, that Action for Children do, both at the Salford Fostering Unit and also the Withenshaw Multisystemic Therapy Unit. Both offices serve the North West and meeting the people there who run these offices, run these services in direct line of work with young people show the enormous dedication, professionalism and fortitude people who spend all their days and often nights helping to keep children safe, helping to keep children out of drugs, drug dealing, sex trafficking and prostitution, keeping them out of prison, helping the parents to run their families and their family budgets, to regain control of families where bullying teenagers have taken over. So many different ways, children's centres, that Action for Children directly help. And also 
they do an awful lot in terms of lobbying, lobbying government and providing policy advice to local authorities. I'm delighted to say that only a couple of weeks ago the government finally agreed through much lobbying by Action for Children and also other charities that the um, Domestic Abuse Act would be amended such that it recognised children as victims of domestic abuse. If they witnessed domestic abuse they are seen as, as, as victims and therefore have got access to support and protection that they otherwise wouldn't have got, wouldn't get. So, so many great things that this charity does and it's only possible because people like you out there in the churches provide the support, provide the money, provide the encouragement, provide the donations and the toys. As my role as district advocate I've been invited over the last year to so many different fundraising and awareness raising events carried out by different churches in the district. Coffee mornings and Christmas tree festivals and sing-alongs and um, even a model railway exhibition by Romney Church which as, a, as an ex-railway uh, modeller I found absolutely um, amazing, some 30 layouts um, and they didn't charge for people to come in, they just, they just wanted to invite anybody from the uh, local community to come in and provide a, dono a donation of their choosing and they, they raised some 15,000 £15, pounds or more um, for Action for Children by doing it that way. So we can decide that God's kingdom is there and praise God and we should do exactly that. We should praise God for the work of Action for Children but we can also get involved ourselves. and here is where I'm making a plea to you all that perhaps you can do something to support Action for Children. In terms of volunteering, you might want to volunteer as a, um, a mentor to a parent. And there are ways of doing that. Um, or perhaps you want to carry out some fundraising activity. Um, a cake baking um, store or something like that. Or perhaps you just want to have a collection box in your home to put in your change such that over the weeks it can mount up and provide some much needed funds for Action for Children. Whatever it is, I encourage you to pray hard for the health and well-being of children in our country, for their families and parents and for the workers of Action for Children that they may continue to reach out with compassion and with love and to welcome in God's kingdom, a kingdom where everybody is precious to God. Amen.
now our prayers of intercession, which are, adap are adapted from this year's Action for Children worship booklet. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for your grace and saving love, made visible through Jesus. In his name we ask that you bring healing and peace to all those suffering at this time, whether it be physical, mental or emotional. And we name in our hearts before you now those who are known to us. Wonderful Lord of life and love, we ask for your comforting and restoring spirit to rest upon all of these people and their families at this time. And today we especially ask you to be with those people, adults, young people and children who have been or who continue to be victims of abuse and neglect. Let them feel your loving presence. May they know that they are your precious children and have been called into your wonderful light. Father God, we also lift up the work of Action for Children to you today. We think of all the families who come into contact with the charity and pray your blessing over them. We thank you for the thousands of staff members and volunteers who serve children and families and pray that you will sustain them. Give them the energy and enthusiasm they need to lovingly support those most in need. We pray for wisdom and guidance for the leaders and the trustees. And Lord, we pray for our wider society. We ask that your will be done from Westminster all the way down to our communities. We ask that lives led by love, love modelled so perfectly by Christ, transform the world we live in. And finally, we pray for ourselves. Loving God, you have called us to be your people and to share in the ministry of your Son. Grant us, we pray, ears that are open to the cries of those in need, hearts that are eager to respond, voices that are ready to speak out for the oppressed and hands that are active in sharing your bounty. In the name of Jesus, our Saviour and Friend. Amen.
and so may the Lord bless you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Lord look upon you with kindness and give you peace. Amen.